M. It's Mrs. Gill here. Um, this is the first of my lockdown learning lessons um, for you to try and have a go at while you're doing work at home. Um, so we're starting a new topic for this term and the topic is food and fair trade. So we're going to start with food and we're going to look at food miles. So what I'd like you to do first is write the heading food miles neatly into your book. And the question we're going to be trying to answer today is how well travelled is your dinner? So if you want to pause it, you can um, while you write that. But that's what I would like you to do is just to write today's heading and how well travelled is your dinner? You may well have done some of this food miles stuff at primary school. So some of you may know quite a lot already, which is great. What I want you to do is look at this picture of a lovely yummy roast dinner. It's Sunday today and I have a lovely roast dinner cooking downstairs. Um, so what I want you to do is think about all of the ingredients that are used when you cook a roast dinner. So some of them are quite obvious like the carrots and the peas maybe but also have a little think about what goes into the Yorkshire pudding for example and the gravy. one will definitely require you to um, leave the screen for a little bit and maybe pause it. Basically you'll need to print off a copy of the world map so you can either print it from the slideshow or you can just download one off the internet um, and then what you're going to do is go down to your cupboards. Um, if they're anything like mine they'll probably be quite empty because of this lockdown thing but hopefully you'll be able to find some food in some of the cupboards and on the food you should be able to find labels that tell you where the food has come from. So if you look at the next slide, I did this quite a while ago for certain foods. So you can see for example um, the red chilies came from Kenya, the cherry tomatoes came from Morocco, the cranberries came from Canada and so on. So what I'd like you to do is draw up a table in your exercise book um, one of the headings can be food and one of the headings can be country and try to find at least 10 different items from 10 different countries in your cupboards. If you really struggle, then you can use this slide to actually create your list. But it would be better to have a variety from a variety of different places from your own cupboard. Have fun and don't eat too much of it. I know this is making me hungry and I might nip off to have a cream egg. When you have listed your um, countries, then what I want you to do is have a little think about what impact you getting food and me getting food from all around the world has. So there are quite a lot of positive impacts, but there's also some negative impacts. If you look at these clips on this slide, so you can click onto them and have a look, particularly the one that is above the polar bear, it talks to you a little bit and shows you to a really good tune. So dance around if you want to. I know I would be. Um, have a little look at the impact that food miles can have. Maybe jot a few ideas down in your book while you're watching this. Um, the next task is basically to use the sheet on this slide. So you can either print it or you can write it out, whatever you want to do. Um, these are all different impacts that food miles have on the world, basically. So all of you, what I'd like you to do is think about the positive and negative impacts. So you can either print the slide and colour code, show positive and negative, or you could write them out into a table if you wanted to. So you could write positive impacts, negative impacts, draw a table and write out the positive and negative impacts. And if you're feeling like you want a bit of a challenge, then you could try to label each statement to say whether it's economic, social or environmental. So economic is anything to do with money and jobs. Social is anything to do with people's lives. So health, education, that sort of thing. And environment is anything to do with the environment, whether that's the natural or the built environment. 
have a go at that. When you've done that, you can go back to your world map and try and locate all of those countries where you found the food and put them onto a world map. And when you've done your world map, you could take a picture of it and send it to me because that would be absolutely fantastic. So you could, for example, if you've got strawberries that came from Morocco, you could find where Morocco is, shade it on your map and then draw a beautiful strawberry around it. Um, I'm sure a lot of your parents will say geography is all about colouring in, but that isn't true. Although today one of the tasks is to colour in your map. But just try and make sure you find the right countries and have loads of fun. And I look forward to seeing your pictures of your food map. Goodbye.